You're welcome back to the conversation in New Central Television. It's now time for us to switch gears to uh, developments in South Africa with the Foreign Minister, Dr. Naledi Pandor, confirmed a phone call with Hamas's leader, Ismail Haniyeh, uh, to discuss humanitarian aid for Palestinians in Gaza. The conversation aimed at providing essential humanitarian assistance to Gaza and other Palestinian territories. The South African government, however, strongly denied allegations of supporting Hamas's attack on Israel and clarify that they do not have a bilateral relationship with Hamas. Instead, their ties, their bilateral ties with the Palestinian Authority, they express solidarity with the people of Palestine while expressing regret for the loss of innocent lives on both sides. South African President Sir Ramaphosa and the African National Congress officials also pledged their support for the Palestinian cause, drawing parallels with a historical struggle against apartheid. Simultaneously, the situation in the Middle East has seen the conflict escalate, but Israel declared war on Hamas after the latest fighters breached the heavily fortified Gaza border. The conflict has resulted in casualties on both sides. Now, joining me this evening for this discussion is Marcus Hollenton, a research analyst who joins us live from Johannesburg in South Africa. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Marcus, and thanks uh, for joining us on the program. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we are struggling with load shedding in South Africa, and as a result, uh, you will see that my background is not so clear, but uh, I will be very well engaged in this conversation. Thank you, Marcus. Now, Marcus, could you provide uh, an analysis of the motivations and objectives behind South Africa's Foreign Minister, Nanedi Pando, engaging in a phone call with Hamas's leader, Ismail Aniyeh, in the context of humanitarian aid for Palestinians in Gaza. Thank you for that. I'd say um, the request to actually contact uh, Hamas in Gaza came from uh, our Department of International Relations in South Africa, better known as DERCO. And part and parcel of that is uh, to um, uphold international law. So international law posits that uh, while conflict can occur, uh, certain measures need to be taken to ensure that uh, there is uh, limited harm towards uh, civilians, because civilians are not uh, part and parcel of the war, but rather they are collateral damage within a war. And um, in times of war, soldiers should be soldiers, and uh, conflict must only ensue between soldiers. And unfortunately, uh, we don't always see that in, in, in conflict times, and uh, you know we do find the civilians tend to suffer the most from the conflict because they are not trained in, 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 in conflict situations and they're not trained for war. And I think part and parcel of uh, Naledi Pando reaching out to Hamas uh, dates back to uh, South Africa's own uh, history with conflict, specifically that under the apartheid uh, regime where um, the African National Congress at the time, led by, National, uh, by Nelson Mandela, essentially had to mediate and uh, facilitate peace and negotiate peace as well as the freedom of uh, the, the majority at the time who were the uh, black Africans to try and resolve the conflict and bring about uh, solidarity in the country. And I take it in uh, Lady Pando under the auspices of uh, Cyril Ramaphosa have essentially taken on that role of mediator to try and facilitate peace by reaching out to Hamas and to also to allow uh, the people of, of Palestine to, um, I guess for lack of a better word, to have some time to recoup while these uh, discussions and, and whatnot are uh, ensuing. And as you initially um, alluded to, uh, I think in the beginning of this conversation was uh, the deeper sadness that was shared by uh, Foreign Minister Naledi Pando on the loss of lives between both uh, Palestine and uh, Israelites. And that essentially comes from the mere fact that international law, like I did mention earlier, seeks to uphold peace and solidarity within uh, countries and between countries and to try and uh, limit that uh, aftermath into, into the various populations, many of whom 
uh, bystanders and do not necessarily want to go to war because uh, we do know that war is not a really nice thing and uh, people do die. Unfortunately, the, the civilians have to um, take on, um, yeah, they, they essentially have to incur a lot of uh, casualties. So this is where uh, this is where this conversation comes into play. And I think uh, what's also caused um, the, the need to reach out to Hamas is the mere fact that on the 7th of October, uh, some 1,300 people were killed by Hamas in the southern parts of Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel. And that is the most uh, deadliest single day killing that has ever occurred in the country, which has been Israel in the, in the past 75 years. And we can see with the, with the response to the aggression that uh, Israel is then um, pretty much uh, targeted back to um, Palestine that over 3,000 people have died. So really the international community, South Africa, I guess um, also part and parcel of the countries that are on the forefront to try and mitigate that conflict have now taken it upon okay. themselves. To Thank stop you. The Thank you, Marcus. I'd like to bring in our second panelist into the discussion, okay. uh, Gideon Chitanga. Gideon is a research associate at the African Center for the Study of the United States at the Witwatersrand uh, University in South Africa. A warm welcome to you, uh, Gideon. Thank you. Now, Gideon, in light of the allegations uh, that, you know, the South African government uh, is supporting uh, accusations of the government support uh, for uh, Hamas's attack on Israel, how is this, uh, what, what do you make of this and how might this affect uh, South Africa's international relations? Because like uh, Marcus just said, it's uh, the biggest single day attack on Israel in 75 years and uh, some have compared it to, uh, they've said this is Israel's 9-11 moment and to see uh, South Africa in a discussion with the leader of this uh, group that carried out this uh, attack in, uh, with, with South Af with, uh, against uh, the state of Israel might be misconstrued in some quarters as tacit support. What do you make of this? So I think that um, any critic would uh, suggest that um, South Africa is uh, supporting uh, Hamas in the sense of uh, committing uh, violence would be deliberately distorting a clear uh, foreign policy position from the South African government. Um, it is very clear that um, the, as with uh, several conflicts in the continent and outside continent, South Africa stands um, on a position that seeks a solutions to global and continental conflict that is informed and driven by the history of the country and uh, the history of the continent. And um, uh, more importantly, the focus on dialogue is opposed to military violence as a way of solving the international or continental conflicts. South Africa, like uh, the colleague expressed, he realized its um, uh, transition from apartheid through very painful dialogue. And uh, the country and some of the living political leaders he still have that experience of being involved in the liberation struggle. He, I would hazard to say many African political leaders as well, they would uh, be inclined to sympathize with Hamas in, in the sense that um, they committed their lives to fighting for self-determination, national sovereignty, human dignity, and human rights. And uh, the history of the conflict uh, that we are talking about is uh, deeply entrenched uh, into the cause for self-determination for the for the for the for the Gazans or broadly the Palestinians who happened who happened to be uh, living under the domination of Israel. Israel. Uh, and from that perspective, uh, I think one can make a very strong argument that uh, countries like South Africa, many uh, African countries, countries from uh, the global south who, who, who have uh, cautioned uh, that uh, violence or war uh, or uh, aggravated invasion of uh, Gaza would uh, create a very dire situation for a place that already has been suffering under the weight of an oppressive apartheid system that is established today, I think a lot of these leaders would stand with that position. And that does not necessarily mean they support 
the, the position that uh, Hamas is taking to embark on violence, these countries, these leaders, and including South Africa, they are saying that um, there is need for caution, need to pursue dialogue, need to pursue negotiations, need to also look at the interests of um, the, 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 the Gazans and broadly the, Palestine, the Palestinians who actually happen to be, uh, I think at, the, at, the, at this moment, uh, besieged. If you, you, you pay attention to Western media, you hear a narrative that is predominantly pro-Israel and does not uh, even raise the voices of uh, the Gazans, other than uh, 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 raising uh, concerns about humanitarian issues. Mm. This conflict has been there since 70, 75 years, and the causes are deeply entrenched. I think it's time that uh, both Israel, Gaza, and the broader Palestinian communities start to listen to each other and be listened to and pursue comprehensive dialogue to end circles of violence in the region. And I would argue that South Africa is right to state its position in terms of highlighting the importance of uh, observing international law. South Africa is right in terms of arguing for dialogue. And by the way, other countries uh, from the global uh, South, including China, have raised concerns uh, 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 in the context of saying uh, Israel has to be cautious. The, the proportionality of Israel's and to protect uh, response to the October 7th law. attacks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gideon. Now, back to you. Uh, Marcus, uh, I remember Madiba, the late uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, did say that Africa is not free until uh, the Palestinian struggle is over. And I remember speaking with Dr. Naledi Pando on our platform a few uh, weeks ago, and she said, you know, the parallels, she drew parallels uh, with what uh, the Palestinians are going through in Gaza with uh, the uh, apartheid regime in South Africa and did say that the United Nations should classify Israel as an apartheid state. Now, having established that background, could you elaborate on South Africa's historical stance on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and how it has evolved over the years, especially in the context of the recent conflict involving Hamas and Israel? Uh, it seems that uh, South uh, Israel, uh, Palestine, Palestine's uh, biggest ally on the African continent is uh, South Africa, as uh, some may also argue, Algeria. Thank you so much. I think uh, South Africa's policy on uh, Palestine is clear. South Africa has always shown solidarity and support for the people of Palestine, and they've expressed a great sadness and the need to reach out to, to Hamas. So now what we have is essentially um, a situation of conflict wherein um, the Hamas are also fighting to, to, to get some form of liberation and to uh, rightfully um, take on back their, their, their land, for lack of a better word. And uh, like you did mention, um, the response that um, Israel has then um, ensued in, in response to uh, the, the attack that the Hamas have essentially um, brought about to, to, to Israel is is quite sad because if you do think about it, the mere fact that we have um, a deadly attack of about 1,300 in a day would then, I guess, necessitate some some form of aggression from uh, from Israel. And while at least we have this complex di dynamic of, of conflict and uh, thousands and thousands of deaths, one could also argue that uh, the sheer number of deaths that have been incurred by, by, by in, in the Gaza Strip and the sheer number of deaths that the Palestinians have suffered over the years, you know, through, through, through the course of the 75-year war have also been quite intense. And uh, this very point is starting to escalate. Now, South Africa being, um, you know, in the country that it is and its experience with conflict that ties back to its uh, very past with apartheid is taking on the stance to try and mitigate and uh, bridge the gap in misunderstandings that that, that has been ensuing for, for, for almost a century now between uh, both countries. And as a result, they're essentially doing the very best that they can to try and negotiate and mediate peace because in this very situation, um, that is the very best that they can do. And until 
more international engagement actually um, comes into play to try and uh, mitigate this conflict and bring players to the table, like uh, the previous colleague mentioned, um, this war could potentially go on. And they are definitely right to say, Analit Fund is definitely right to compare the, 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 the conflict between Israel and Palestine to apartheid, because as uh, some of us may remember, um, the African National Congress was once uh, coined as a terrorist organization itself. Hence, um, it's, um, I would say, hence its need to mediate, because once upon a time, they were also coined as a, as a terrorist organization, similar to what the Hamas are doing. Unfortunately, um, people, the civilians at the end of the day, are the ones that pay the greatest price. So I think those will be my, uh, my yeah, th that'll be my, my analysis with regards to, to your question, my good sir. yesterday where I mean both sides are trading blames as to who is responsible uh, for the attack on the hospital and how might South Africa's involvement uh, in humanitarian aid discussions influence uh, the broader peace process? Um, if it's a question to me I'm not sure we had we just had a bit of a leg if it's a question oh, no, to me it's, it's directed to Gideon please okay yes Nation Security Council. And um, I know from yesterday and today, there was a big debate about um, in the UN Security Council to uh, at least try to uh, pave a way for humanitarian aid into, into Gaza. Uh, I am sure that your, your viewers uh, who have been following the situation, they can agree with, uh, from a very humane perspective, the situation in Gaza is very distressful. It's, it's a situation that is painful to watch. Obviously, the key players are Israel, the US that subsidized or has been backing Israel strongly. The president of the US, Joe Biden, is in Israel. Secretary Blinken was in Israel. Austin, the, the Secretary of Defense, was there, and their message was very clear that they support Israel. And uh, Biden was also talking today about uh, humanitarian aid. But there's something very interesting about this whole discourse uh, about humanitarian aid. I think, yes, it's important for Gazans to get humanitarian aid, water, he provide for social amenities, energy, medical supplies. He, he, you can see how desperate the situation is in terms of recovery of people who are injured, people using their bare hands to do that. He, we hear that uh, hospitals are flooded and some are being bombed. This is simply inhumane he, without even thinking about he, he international law. E, or international conventions and uh, uh, what they say, we, are, we, are, we, we claim to be civilized. E Joe Biden was talking about um, civilized democracies. E Netanyahu was talking about we, the civilized world. This kind of butchery is uh, the opposite of civilization. Yes, Hamas committed serious crimes, but also e, this vengeful e, way of addressing the problem is a, not a solution at all. Those who have read the psychology of uh, of uh, radicalization would probably say that uh, when uh, people go through the treatment that uh, Gazians are being subjected to now, uh, they have two options. One is to uh, uh, is to submit, but the other is to say, uh, "What do I lose?" They become hopeless and uh, obviously radicalize further, and this creates and recreates a cycle of actors who are likely to commit serious uh, violations. I think that um, there are and three we've been that seeing this pattern happen, play out. That should happen. Yeah, we've been seeing this pattern play out since the Nakba in 1948. So I, I think this for the bombings uh, with no red line for the Israelis, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to uh, really help the situation. But let me let uh, Michaels have the final say. What would it take to bring this conflict to an end? I mean, to get a ceasefire at least uh, so that innocents don't keep suffering uh, that are caught in the crossfire. And also in the context 
of South African protests, both for and against Israel. How do these public demonstrations reflect the domestic sentiment and public opinion in South Africa regarding uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? If you can answer in less than two minutes, I'd appreciate because we've fast uh, run out of time on the program. Okay, thank you. I'll start with your, with your later question. I'd say South Africa has got a quite a strong Palestinian community. And also owing to our history in the country with apartheid and uh, the situation in the Gaza Strip resonating with our own history, we totally understand um, we, we understand what uh, prejudice means, we understand what oppression means, we understand what conflict means, especially that pertaining to one's land. Uh, regarding what the international, or regarding what uh, what is it going to take for uh, this conflict to somewhat come up to a ceasefire in the very least, I would say would need a global effort from the international community to um, call Hamas and uh, call Israel in the same manner that the South African government has done under Naledi Pando to try and sway both parties of the conflict into at least establishing um, a ceasefire, be, uh, be short as it may be or be long as it may be, just depending on the kind of uh, outcome that uh, the international community is able to establish to try and stop the conflict and find a resolution. If, um, set, uh, if land has to be provisioned or if more resources have to be provisioned, uh, if, if, uh, if a treaty needs to be signed, uh, and um, and so forth, and then so be it. But I would say the international community would essentially have to uh, collaborate and uh, approach Hamas and uh, the, the, the Israelites as well to try and stop the conflict. And I would say the United States here has got a great role to play given its uh, strong relations with Israel. We know that uh, the United States has been part and parcel of uh, Israel's defense movement. And one could argue that it's that same defense program that has uh, pretty much in, resulted in mass casualties uh, ensuing okay. in, um, in, in Israel. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus Hollington, a uh, research analyst uh, joining uh, live from Johannesburg, South Africa, and also uh, Kidia Chitanga, research associate at the African Center for the Study of the United States at Wits University in South Africa. It was a pleasure having you both uh, join me on the program. I do appreciate your insight. Thank you. This Thank is so where much. we wrap up the conversation. Thank you very much for being a part of the program. See you next time. I am Benga Aburoa. Bye-bye.